How good is the GTX 970 here in 2024? This graphics card is 10 years old this year, and we're gonna take a look and see how good it does in today's games. Now, when this graphics card was released, it did have a lot of controversy because it was supposed to have four gigabytes of VRAM. And although it technically did, it turns out that three and a half gigabytes of the VRAM was at the correct speeds, but the other half of a gigabyte of VRAM was the problem. And so that caused a lot of problems back in the day. But uh, if you want more details about that, there's plenty of videos on the internet. We're gonna test some of the more demanding games on the market that are popular. And we're also gonna test some like lower demanding games and esports titles so that you can see how good this graphics card does in those types of games if you have a decent CPU. According to AverageFinder.com, if you wanted to pick up this graphics card, it would be somewhere around $47 on eBay here in the US. If you wanna check that out, there'll be a link down in the description. So let's throw it in our test bench and let's get started. For our test bench, we use an Intel i5-12600K. It's a good middle of the road processor that we like to use with a nice deep cool air cooler and 32 gigs of RAM running at 5600 megahertz. So we are using DDR5 RAM. First up, we tried some Warzone and we used the balance preset settings. No upscaling and that gave us around a 43 FPS average. So we decided to throw on some FSR 3.0 to give it a chance and that did get us up to like a solid 60-ish FPS. However, the good part about that is that there's now AMD frame generation and it works with Nvidia graphics cards. So we threw on the frame generation with the FSR 3.0 and we got close to like 90-ish FPS to 100 FPS, which was nice to see with this old of a graphics card. We also tried the basic preset settings to see if that made much of a difference either. And it was pretty much the same thing. It was only just a few FPS higher at each of the levels, if that really matters to you at all. Then we tried Horizon Forbidden West. At the time of recording this video, it's not been on PC super duper long, but it is a fairly demanding game. So we thought it would be a good one to put this little graphics card to the test. First, we tried the very low preset settings. Like it says very low, like that's how low it goes. And we got like close to 40-ish FPS at most of the time as we were walking around. We're still pretty early in the story here, but we did do some fighting and that seemed to, you know, be around that 40-ish mark. And we tried to bump it up one notch to just low settings, not very low, and it was like 33-ish FPS. I think it's pretty playable for a story mode game. The best part was that it was able to kind of hold steady at those frame rates, and I didn't notice any hitches or glitches or anything like that, so that was nice. Then we tried to liberate some space aliens in Helldivers 2, which is also a really demanding game here in 2024. And the settings on this game are kind of weirdish to me. I put it on the low presets and that put everything low except for the textures. It put that on high, I guess so it wouldn't be so grainy. But then you also have to be careful because when you go to change your resolution, the render scale will automatically change to whatever it thinks it needs with your graphics card when you first install it. So I changed that to just the balanced render scale. So it's kind of in the middle, you know. And we got like around a 60-ish FPS average, which I thought was really solid. Then we tried like an in-between title like Apex Legends. This is in the gun run game mode, so battle royale settings might be a little different and your FPS might differ slightly. We tried low settings first and we got around like 140-ish FPS, which, you know, is pretty s smooth. And I know there's always people that are going to say, just get a console. But who wants to do that? So we bumped it up to high settings just to see what it would do and actually wasn't as bad as I thought. We stayed around the 120 mark even at high settings. So I think this is pretty solid for a GTX 970. But now let's hop into the true esports games. Valorant was up first and Valorant can pretty much run on a potato. So in Valorant, low settings and high settings don't make a drastic difference. We tried low settings first and we got around like 380-ish FPS, which, you know, plenty of FPS for Valorant. I capped mine at 240 when I play the game normally on my main PC back here. Like 300 is just crazy. Even when we bumped the settings up to high, we still got over 300 FPS. It was closer to like 320, 330, but it was still well over 300. Then we tried CS2. It is a little bit more demanding than the original version of CS, but this 970 still did pretty solid. 
We tried the high preset settings first and that got us around like 120 to 130 FPS in this deathmatch that we played. I don't play CS very much so I didn't you know test the full game. I'm assuming it will not be much much different but deathmatch ran pretty smooth. But we also bumped it down to low settings just to see you know what our maximum FPS numbers might be and we got like 280 sometimes it was close to 300 which I think is you know certainly absolutely playable but now for the ultimate test and that is good old Fortnite. In Fortnite you know we always got to run two tests. We run it on DX12 first then we run it on performance mode. First on DX12 we use the competitive settings that is 1080p view distance on far and everything else is either turned off or turned to low. When we did this throughout this game we've actually played it twice just to make sure that our FPS numbers were right. In both of our games we got around 120 to 130 FPS. So then we had to restart the game and put it in good old performance mode where this graphics card can shine in the game of Fortnite. Really it's the CPU but you know. We got over 220 FPS most of the time. In fact, it was closer to like 250 most of the game, but every now and then, depending on, you know, if something crazy was happening, especially with all the cars and the explosions. But anyway, 240 to 250 in Fortnite, I, I think that's pretty solid. Now, depending on your CPU, this graphics card may or may not perform as well as what you saw in this video. But for a budget system with something like a Ryzen 5 3600, I think this is a great graphics card for a cheap budget build. So definitely expect to see it in one of my PC flipping videos where I'm trying to sell PCs until I buy my wife a pool. So if you want to start that series, go click this.